Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Jeremy Schwartz, and I am the Digital Strategist for NetScaler here at Citrix. I am joined today by George McGregor, Senior Director for Cloud Network Marketing, and Ken Ross, Director of Product Management for NetScaler. In today's session, we're going to discuss why maintaining visibility and, and control is so critical as you move your applications and workloads to the cloud, and how NetScaler Management and Analytics allows you to manage your infrastructure across the hybrid and multi-cloud environment and harness data to make better business decisions. We plan to illustrate all of this by showing you the NetScaler Management and Analytics service in action. Before I go into the presentation, let me review quickly a few housekeeping details. We will have a live Q&A session toward the end of today's event, and you're welcome to submit your questions during the presentation. At any time, simply type your question into the Ask Question window and hit Submit. Also, we are recording this event, and the on-demand version will be available from the same URL that you used to join today. So feel free to come back, watch the archive, or share it with your colleagues. And now I'm going to hand it over to George for the presentation. Thank you, Jeremy. So um, I'm pleased to be here with Ken today, and we're going, to, uh, we're going to take you through some of the details of the NetScaler Management and Analytics uh, solution from Citrix. So let's start by talking a little bit about what's, what's going on uh, and why uh, people are moving applications to the cloud. Well, services and, and uh, people have been on the, way, on the move for a while, and um, uh, critical business applications are being accessed from all over the place. But now applications are on the move to, to, to the cloud. Um, and, and this is driven by a number of factors. So people are looking for organizational agility. They want to be able to deploy applications and, and, um, uh, and maintain the quality of service in a very dynamic way. They want to lower their costs. They want to make sure they can get global coverage and, and um, make sure that services are available from everywhere. And they're also interested in getting automation and driving uh, a very dynamic environment, um, which reacts to the, the customer requirements. So these are the reasons why cloud adoption is taking place. And in fact, we did a recent survey with uh, IDC uh, of 900 decision makers. And we, you know, of that population, 72% of the, the um, respondents uh, said that they were already embracing the cloud in some form or other for their applications. But interestingly enough, 82% of them said that they, they thought that their current infrastructure was providing some barriers and was getting in the way of them getting the economic benefits that were promised and getting the organizational agility and the automation that, that they were looking for. So if we look a little bit more about that, uh, on that survey, just to take a look at, at some of the results, we can see that there are some challenges and people are concerned about some of the aspects of moving applications to the cloud. And if you look at some of the details here, you can see that there are concerns about being able to implement policy and control consistency consistently. And there are challenges with uh, improving security uh, as, as you move applications to the cloud and also improved vis visibility is a concern. And these are all items that are, are um, required in the future environment if the, the true economic benefits are going to be um, achieved. Um, so this, so this, is a, this is a recent survey, and really this is something that we've been working on to really address. So the present, this presentation is really all about how we, you can help to enforce the policies and controls to gain and regain the improved visibility and apply security as you move your workloads to the cloud. So if I show this environment here, this is really the, the reality of, uh, of the hybrid cloud environment. It's important to note that um, it's a hybrid multi-cloud environment which is required to really get the economic benefits. And that means you'll have people and users who are on mobile devices, they'll be in branches, they'll be accessing the data center because some applications will still be there, but they'll also be accessing SaaS applications and they'll be accessing application workloads that are on Amazon, Azure, or on Google. So it's a very complex environment which has to be managed. So how do we make sure that we can actually get the visibility we need and be able to, to manage and, and, and offer the, the services that we require? Well, let's take a quick look at the, um, the Citrix NetScaler portfolio. 
Um, if I start at the middle section here, um, I can talk a little bit about the, the services that are offered by NetScale. And going from left to right here, we have a, a, an SD-WAN solution, and we have firewall solutions for providing a level of protection in the branch. Uh, we also have um, a, a secure web gateway solution for protecting enterprise data and applications. And we also have a means of accessing uh, and providing remote access and providing single sign-on to any kind of application uh, using our unified gateway network service. And then finally, we have a web application <coughs> firewall, um, which protects your applications from application level threats. And we have the full NetScaler ADC suite of load balancing and caching and application delivery services. So all of these services are, are available and they're distributed across the landscape that I showed in the previous slide. And they, they, can, they both need to be managed with policies and, and um, uh, in a very dynamic way, but they can also be a source of very useful data about applications and users. And that's, that's really the heart of what we're going to be showing you today. So this is just a you know a summary of the the, the portfolio um, and um, and explains how the, the management and analytics piece which you see at the top of the picture here sits on top of that. So NetScaler Mass is a product from Citrix which is both available as a cloud service and it's also available as a product that you can download and install in your data center. And as you can see here, there are three main areas um, which. Uh, Mass provides uh, functionality. One is invisibility and analytics. The other is an application-centric way in which you can manage your infrastructure. And the third piece is to do with automation and orchestration. And we're going to just jump in here and talk about each of these three in some level of detail and, and, and show you Mass in action. I'm going to hand over here to Ken. Thanks, George. Um, so this, this high-level view here is obviously showing these services. Um, but showing them uh, deployed in both physical, virtual container type, virtualized environments, and then on cloud. And we, we put a lot of effort here from a management perspective in making sure that we can provide transparent visibility across all of these types of deployments. So if I go into a little bit around management, uh, the, the base management and monitoring capabilities, then We've put in what you'd normally expect from a traditional network management system in terms of being able to do the discovery and the base inventory of all the ADC instances that have been deployed. But now we're putting this in, in the context of being seeing these instances that are deployed on Azure, on Amazon, in a private cloud, and on-premise uh, based on hardware appliances. On top of that, as, as we described earlier, there's capabilities needed here to put some control into the environment. So there's a lot of emphasis in today's enterprises, particularly, as well as traditionally in the service provider space, around being able to do a configuration baseline and get control over the environment through that automation. So there's a lot of powerful configuration management support here that allows you to set up configuration policies as standard, audit those on an ongoing basis, and get um, tied into the monitoring and reporting side, uh, indications of whether there's any configuration drift. And customers are very um, interested in this because it is often the configuration side that starts to cause issues in the network environment. Another aspect here that we'll, uh, we'll talk about is when we talk to some of the application-centric modes of managing the environment is stylebooks. So we've created a mechanism here for bridging some of the skill set and the um, and the interfaces between the central IT organization and the line of business. And we'll come back to Stylebooks a little bit in the future, but it's a key aspect of what we're doing from a base capability for application-centric management using some of the system-level management for role-based access control. So th these are some of the base capabilities. As we mentioned before, we've also put effort into providing um, increasingly um, complex analytics algorithms that start to help automate really the, the fault management, anomaly detection, and the ongoing visibility into any potential anomalies that might be happening in the system. 
Now, the, one of the things that um, is enabling this is obviously the richness of data. So there's a lot of instrumentation from the ADC environment that gets pulled up into the management system. We've put a lot of effort into not just that instrumentation, but also the transport layers. And we actually have a, a, a new log stream infra, um, uh, transport layer that is going GA in December to pool very efficiently a lot of the transactional data up into these capabilities that allow us to then run, look, look into the transactions, provide cuts of the data based on users, based on applications, based on the security side, insight into the SSL encryption environment. <clears throat> and then what we've done is map that into a, an application dashboard that starts to give you visibility based on the way that you've configured your environment of specific applications. And the idea here is to really do uh, pr provide or enable a way of matching the ADC environment to the specific applications that it's actually supporting and, and make this relevant to um, a central IT organization's uh, customers, whether those are internal lines of business, uh, driving the business for an enterprise, for example, or whether these are end customers for a service provider. In addition to that, I'll just mention that uh, what we've labeled here as advanced analytics is starting to use some of the latest machine learning algorithms. Um, and when we've started here specifically pulling in baselines of performance information and starting to do anomaly detection. And the idea here is to reduce the onus on uh, the administrator to figure out what the root cause of an actual problem is, but to actually help that that process by giving early identification of any anomalies in the system that might be causing an issue. So with that, with that overview, what we'd like to do is move into an initial demo of some of the base capabilities so that you can get a better flavor of what we're talking about here. All right, so while, uh, while we're, we're uh, setting up the demo, let me just set a little bit of context about what we're gonna show you here. We're gonna start with the, um, uh, the NetScaler Management and Analytics Service. Um, and we're uh, going to show a customer environment, um, which is, uh, it's a customer who has, has a number of different applications. They have some on-premise applications and they have some in AWS and in Azure. They also use the Citrix VDI app des um, Zen Desktop and um, uh, Zen app for their uh, desktop and, and application gateway functionality to provide single sign-on to all of the applications. Um, they also have uh, developer teams who are creating new cloud native applications and we'll get to that and talk a little bit about that um, later on in the session. Um, so let's just take, get started here. Uh, hopefully you can see the screen here. This is the NetScaler Management and Analytics Console. And I'm just going to move, first of all, to talk a little bit about the, uh, the network's view and some of the configuration and policy uh, management tools that we have available. Um, so taking a look at this, this console to start with, you can see that um, there are some, there's some infrastructure in AWS and there's some in Azure. And I can scroll down and I can look across the whole environment and I can see the health, uptime, information on the instances that are deployed. And I can also see very useful information on the state of the certificates that are being used across the infrastructure. And I'll come back to the way that we manage and, and provide visibility to certificates in a, in, a, in a moment. But this is just really the top level screen for looking at your infrastructure. And you can see here um, a lot of, a lot of uh, useful information already at this level. And then what we can do is we can, actually, we can actually dive in and look at some of the details of a particular deployment. And I can, I can look here and I can see events, for example, and um, there are a number of tools which make it very easy for you to set the severity of events and manage that in a, in a very, uh, you know, make sure that suits your own policies and your own processes. Basically, I can look at these. I can look at the certificates for a particular deployment. I can get all sorts of information um, based on this 
you know, digging down and doing a deep dive from this geo view. So if I look through this this section of the of the uh, the dashboard, I can see I have uh, this network view. I can also have all sorts of information about the events. So as I mentioned, I can configure that fully. Um, I can also look at the SSL certificates. So this is a very detailed view of the state of all of the certificates um, across my infrastructure. And I can see at a glance um, which ones are expired, which ones are expiring soon. Uh, and I can see some information about the signature algorithms, the issuers, uh, and all of this kind of information. Now, one important thing here is I can actually set policies about the, the certific certificates that I'm using, so I can actually have recommended algorithms, key strengths, etc. And then I can actually apply this, and this will be used as I look at my dashboard. Now, if I discover that there are some, some certificates that are expired, I can actually move and, and go straight to uh, the renewal process and actually initiate uh, the process of renewing that certificate directly from here. So I can, you know, it's a very, very powerful set of tools here. Now, moving down, we have uh, more uh, tools available for maintaining the uh, the levels of, of uh, software and services across your infrastructure in a very consistent way. And as Ken mentioned, we have ways in which we can actually run uh, audits to, to double check configurations and make sure that uh, your, your policies that you set are being applied. Um, so this is a very full set of functionality. I'm just really touching touching on some of this, but um, this is all to do with the management and um, policy enforcement across your infrastructure. So at this point, I'm going to move on here, and we're going to look a little bit about the um, the application view uh, that you get from Mass and how you map applications to the infrastructure so that you can manage those in a very consistent way. So let's take a look at that. Yeah, thanks, John. So, you know, I think what we found was that customers really liked some of the, 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 the main uh, ADC administrators liked that view of the actual instances so that they could understand what inventory they had, what state it was all in. But increasingly, as, as enterprises are starting to move to multi-hybrid cloud, um, they need to be able to engage more effectively with their either internal or external customers. Often it's lines of business. They have um, development teams that are build, building the next generation set of applications. They are uh, they're aware that they have easy access to infrastructure as a service from customers from uh, uh, services like AWS and Azure. And so the, the IT organization is kind of challenged in terms of making sure that they keep the business running, but also um, provide the right services with the right agility in order to help the lines of business and their new applications be competitive. So what we've done here is essentially provide an application-centric view of the, the actual ADC environment. Now, what I mean by that is um, and you can see on the dashboard here, we've represented a couple of applications. You can see SAP and Cerner. These are just these have just been configured to um, to represent the the V servers and the application load balancing that is configured on the ADC environment. So if I see a certain amount of traffic from, say, my SAP application, it is showing up here as a rather large tile. Uh, basically representing the amount of traffic that it's showing, that it's, that it's supporting. You can see Cern the Cerner app is over here, and there's others underneath. Um, and we, we're providing a way here of, um, of separating them based on whatever makes sense to the actual administrator. It could be by type of application. It could be by line of business. This gives them a way of, of, of separating out, mapped to, the, to their organization. Now, one of the, just to illustrate some of this, um, one actually, first of all, this application score here is is going to show if you if the application is actually starting to exhibit some performance issues. We're using an industry standard AppTech score that basically categorizes the latency for that application into three buckets. Uh, obviously, acceptable, which would be coming up here as blue, 
if it starts, to, if the latency starts to degrade and it is something that the users are really just putting up with, then it will start to gradually go to light blue to pink. And then if it's really severe and unusable, then the applications will appear on this dashboard as red. Um, the, the other thing that we've tried to do here from a navigation perspective is help the, the network engineers deal with the rest of their organization. So, if, for example, if, if we get a trouble ticket um, or even a phone call from, say, an application owner that's in a, a separate part of the organization and, he t and he's complaining, say, that the Workday application is not working well, I can just do a quick search for Workday and check on the status of Workday in the system. So it's coming up as blue, looks good. Um, I may want to do an additional check on the actual details of this application score. And so I can easily navigate down into this application score here for Workday. This menu on the right-hand side is now in the context of that one application. So I can click on this and uh, start to drill down. Let me come back to show you it from here. <coughs> And show the app score. Okay, this is not showing up. I'm going to skip that just now. The other aspect that we're showing on the dashboards here is the app security dashboard. And what we're doing here is where where the ADC environment has been set up for this application using application firewalls, we're drilling down showing the detail of any of the actual violations that are being captured by the firewall and giving a summary. And you can see Workday here is showing up with a threat index of seven. So it is seeing some activity from a threat perspective. And we're also showing from a safety index um, recommendations from a, a configuration perspective. So we're actually analyzing the environment that's been set up. And we're showing that the we're, we're basically um, tying this back to Citrix recommendations on how you would set up the application area and and giving some recommendations on how you would fix the, the configurations to make the application safer from a security perspective. All right. With that, I'm going to dig down into some other analytics that we have specific to the Zen Apps in desktop space. And what we're showing here is um, we're basically pooling some of the transactional data out of the ADC environment. We're digging into those transactions and we're separating out um, the, particularly the latency of, the, of each of the transactions by and separating out WAN latency from data center latency predominantly and giving a picture into that. And we can, we can break that down by individual user so that you can actually see the performance and the latency being experienced and where potential issues might be. So this Alexis uh, user here is seeing quite a long kind of one second latency. Um, might be okay, but we're seeing data, data center latency here that's getting quite large and that might be something that's worth digging into. The other aspect of this, so there's a, there is additional information down here from a geographic perspective. There's information from which browsers the actual users are, are coming in from. We can also dig into, again, an application-centric view, uh, look at some of the launch duration, durations by, by application. Um, you can see some of them here. We've kind of highlighted some of the main, um, main applications and how long it's taking to actually launch them. If I dig into Outlook, we can start to see more detailed information. So these are actually applications that are being managed by uh, ZenApp yeah. yeah, and then on the gateway side, if you're running the, the gateway application, then we're we're tracking statistics around authentication, authentication failures, single sign-on, um, and application launch details again. You want to go into the security insights, Tom? Yeah, so I think uh, I'll just maybe add. If you go back to the security dashboard, I think we'll just maybe just add, use that add, add a couple of things. Um, Ken talked about the, um, the threat index and the safety index here. So just to summarize that, the threat index shows the criticality of the attack and the safety index shows how well you're protected against the attack. And um, 
from from this there are there are a number of other um, tools that you have available but basically here just as an example if i hover over these items i can see uh, information about a specific attack when it took place the number of events um, and and really understand what's going on and down at the bottom here i can see total events and time uh, of the, the attacks now with respect to the safety index you can you can look per application at how well you're protected and um, in fact there's a number of tools available where where based you know based on the safety index you get advice on things that you should do to improve your environment and the safety of a specific application and then as you implement those you can see that the sef the safety index improves so this is just this is again just a few examples of the kind of tools that are available to protect your application infrastructure um, from from application level attacks. And um, I should I should point out this is based on um, a network function, which is an application firewall, uh, which is available from uh, Citrix, one of you know, one of the best application firewall products on the market, um, which you can deploy. Uh, in order to pro provide this level of protection, and it works in very, very closely in collaboration with Netscaler Mass in order to protect your infrastructure. Um, so I think that's all on the application side. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more now about how we um, how we provide services, developing new applications, and also how we can provide access in a very structured and secure way to different teams um, in order to provide them with very useful information but do it in a very managed way. Um, so I'm, we're now going to move back to the, uh, the presentation here and uh, just introduce a little bit in terms of the, the concepts around how, how we uh, support those, those different communities um, and then we'll jump back into the demo again and show you some more stuff. Yeah, so thanks, George. I'm just showing these a um, couple of examples here of the kinds of applications um, that lines of business in an enterprise are focusing on more and more. And really, particularly when customers are, their customers, are um, increasingly using particularly mobile phone environments and smartphones to, act, to access any of their applications the speed of update and the agility that the enterprise needs in order to remain competitive is, is becoming paramount. And that, to some extent, often goes against the traditional um, operating environment of an IT organization. IT organizations, and there's a couple of personas here, are typically risk averse. They're very focused on making sure that the network environment is highly available and performing. They're also very um, uh, focused around making sure that they manage vendors appropriately. They have um, particular policies around the way that they manage vendors and also get support. Lines of business may not be operating in quite such a, uh, a kind of highly available mode and need to, to work extremely quickly. So one of the challenges here is kind of shadow IT lines of business using some of the cloud services without necessarily following all of the required practices from a security perspective, from an availability, and sometimes even from uh, you know, a legal perspective as well. So to help kind of help um, look at m matching the two environments together, we've actually been also focused, uh, as I mentioned very early on, on providing a configuration environment using what we're calling style books that helps map on, uh, the ADC environment into the development environment in a line of business. Now, these, these development environments are typically, these days, a, a CICD, a continuous integration, continued delivery type environment. It's very highly automated. There's a whole application development stack involved here. And so what we've done with the configuration per application is provide an API that the ADC engineers can actually can actually manipulate and make very simple for the application developers and and then then offer up those files as a way in a, in a way that is easily consumed by the application delivery stack and just to illustrate that uh, <clears throat> that process the idea here is that the 
The network engineers, the ADC engineers who understand the detailed configurations can define an application style book within our management and analytics system. It uses a declarative API driven model. In other words, it just, needs, it just exposes a description of how the application would be deployed. And under the covers, the management system is doing and handling the detail of the configuration of the load balancing, the context switching, which algorithms are being used. And those are not necessarily exposed to the line of business, who really doesn't necessarily care. Um, but it also gives the central IT organization a way of exposing relatively powerful features from the NetScaler environment that aren't necessarily available using, say, load balancers that are open source, open source software based. There's a lot of richness in terms of the configuration options and on the instrumentation side in the NetScaler environment that the lines of business could take um, advantage of if they were using them. And this gives a way for the uh, central IT guys to expose that. They're exposed as a as a, a YAML file that's easy to fit into the developer's uh, development stack, and it's also rel relatively easy to make some changes. So typically, I'm just going to go through a quick workflow here where um, IT can do things like they can actually use the stylebooks themselves. So um, Mass um, includes a set of stylebooks that are typically kind of uh, representative of deploying. A, an enterprise class app. So things like Outlook, like um, Skype for Business, like uh, GSMB setups, which is a function really of the central IT organization making sure that there's um, high availability across the various clouds. And we're depicting here, obviously, Amazon, um, Azure, and the private cloud. So the central IT guys would use the Cybooks themselves to be able to automate some of these deployments. Um, and then get visibility using the dashboards that we just showed you. Now, what they can then do is extend that environment. Um, and so this is just a, a represent, representation of the visibility that they obviously get. But then they can extend that environment by creating a groups within the organization that represent uh, the, the way that their company is organized. Um, they can then set up access with role-based access control so that the application owners in the other organizations can get uh, both visibility and access to deploying these style books for their own applications, but not necessarily give them access into the, all of the rest of the organization. So maybe you'd constrain online services from being able to deploy financial applications or get visibility into the financial applications, obviously. So this gives you a, a secure way of setting up that visibility through this um, through the mass environment, and then what you can do is ex the central um, ADC guys, with their knowledge of how they would a developer would deploy their app, can expose the style book to the developer. The developer can include it into their uh, development environment. They can include it as they go through development, test, staging, and then production. And then that developer gets access into the performance of their application um, based on the application dashboards that we just showed a minute ago. And then when we come, when you see, if you envisage an environment, say, with a reasonably large organization that maybe has 200 critical applications running, and say there's 10 to 20 that are under development, and these are all getting rolled out through the APIs, the central IT guys don't necessarily have control of when the applications are going to get deployed, but using Mass, they can they can provide each of their internal organizations a pool of resources that becomes automated, and they can use the they can use Mass centrally to get a an a, a complete view of all the various organizations and what they're doing, and so this helps in terms of both. Um, understanding and reporting on the extent of the hybrid multi-cloud uh, leverage that they're getting as an enterprise. But it also helps, particularly when you start looking at exporting reports, the line of business teams to understand what they're actually doing, how much they're spending, for example. So just to illustrate some of this, what we'd like to do is um, go over uh, a quick demo to show some of the concepts here. 
And what we're going to do is I'm going to show a system that has a representation of an organization already set up. Okay, so th this example, you recognize the application dashboard. You can see here that we've set up a, a it's a fake enterprise, obviously, um, with four, uh, three or four organizations. We've got a finance group here that are running Concur, SAP. We have an online services uh, business line with an online portal, a payment gateway, a web crawler. We have Central IT, um, who typically keep an eye on some of the core enterprise type apps like Skype for Business, what they, and then we have a manufacturing organization over here with some AutoCAD and some factory based applications. So this is the, the main administrator having visibility into, <coughs> into the, uh, the whole organization, the whole organization from an ADC environment. And now, <coughs> as we go through this, what we're going to show is I'm going to move down into the account settings. And here you can see that we've got those four organizations set up as user groups. And if I dig into each individual user group, I can start manipulating that and setting up, um, I'm going to, I can set up additional applications that they get access to on the dashboard. And I can also set up style books that they get access to if they want to deploy additional applications. So here, what we're doing is we're selecting a customer tracking system configuration template as a style book, and we're publishing that to a user called Alan, so that Alan, as, an, as the application owner, can then get access uh, both in terms of visibility of it and to the style book to then go and deploy it. So if we now go and log on as Alan, what we're doing here is logging on as this uh, this user from the line of business through the Citrix cloud into the management analytics service. And he gets access into the service here. There's a number of other services that Citrix cloud publishes that if they've subscribed to, they would see here. But as he digs into mass as a service, he comes into the application dashboard. And as a, as a user that's been set up as part of the online services organization, he only sees the four applications that have been set up for that line of business. He can start to dig into some of the, the application performance information on the right-hand side, but he can also open up a style book here, which is focused around a customer tracking system. And the example here is that he's actually deploying this customer tracking system. So all the other applications that are running on that infrastructure um, are actually invisible to this this user, he's only seeing the applications Absolutely. that he has, he's allowed and authorized to access, and then he's only being granted the ability to deploy on uh, some of the, some of the ADC instances, the usually the development test uh, environments for this application that's under development. Okay, so what we're going to dig into here is we're just going to look at the definition, and this is a definition that the application user would not necessarily understand. But it's a definition that the ADC um, developer does, and he can define dependencies here. He gets good visibility into how the applications are deployed. And then the interface that he's exposing to Alan in the line of business is much simpler. It's basically these four or five fields. And so as Alan is deploying, say, into test, he just has, he'll have a pool of, um, uh, of resources in terms of a, an IP address and target instances that you can use. He can give his deployment a name and he can choose a location. So in this example, the, the uh, ADC engineers allowed him to choose the data centers and that's defined in that YAML style book. He can pick up an IP address and then he just selects an instance. He's actually setting up the, the application server address that he's running the application on. So this is you know, four or five um, parameters that make sense to the application deployment owner. And then he can go and create 
the actual configuration. Now this is actually deploying it on the ADC environment. And that's him basically setting up a set of load balancing capabilities in front of his servers. And it's it's been successful. And he can go and look at if, uh, the, the application owner may not do this, but he can actually go and look at the objects that have been created. And he can see that his application has actually been set up. Now having done that, um, he can then go back to the application dashboard here and he can dig into his customer tracking system that's now been deployed and just check on the performance. It looks like the peak usage, it, he's got a track here of, of the actual transactions, he can gauge the performance. Um, and one of the concepts here is that if he's unhappy with that performance, then it's relatively easy for him to work with his ADC engineer to then go back and change some of the configurations in that style book. And so I'm going to advance just briefly here and show some of that. So here we are going back. Um, this is now the ADC engineer going in, looking at the style book, and he wants to give the line of business guy a little bit more visibility. So he's going to add a monitoring capability to the style book. This is obviously a, uh, somebody that needs to actually understand the, uh, the next scale environment. He can make a quick edit here, add some additional parameters, and he will just version the style book to a 1.1 version uh, as, he's, as he's doing this, this quick edit. There we are, we've got a 1.1 version, and then he can upload that into, here he is, he's, what he's doing is just updating that 1.1 version into mass so that the uh, application develop, developer can then go back and, and deploy it. Now let's just jump slightly further forwards, and uh, I'm going to play from here. Back in mass, once he's uploaded it, you can see that we've now got two versions for deploying the customer tracking system. Version 1.1 is now going to get the give the enterprise owner a bit more visibility in terms of these monitors as he's deploying his, his, his application. So hopefully that kind of gives a quick representation of some of the power of uh, sharing the obviously detailed uh, sets of functionalities on Netscalers into the line of business without them necessarily needing to understand a lot of the intricate details. So with that, what we'll do is just go back to the main bit. Right. That's great, thanks. So now um, we're just gonna talk a little bit about um, orchestration um, and how to connect uh, your infrastructure to the kinds of um, orchestration systems that you you have in your environment. Um, so we're going to move on to a little uh, a little bit of a presentation on that, and then we'll bring this to a conclusion. Yeah. So you know, having uh, having worked with say a, a number of different lines of business, obviously uh, as a, an administrator looking after my environment, I, I've got Mass here as a key way of keeping track of what all the various automated deployments uh, are actually doing. It's a good way of keeping, getting visibility into, into the status of those and obviously providing reports. Um, there's additional um, automation that we've provided uh, for some key environments for from an orchestration perspective. So MASS as a system has a set of APIs that basically allow you to do not just the application deployments, but also the base um, infrastructure instances deployments, um, whether they're in private cloud or up, up in uh, public cloud. We've also done integrations with OpenStack into their load balancing uh, capability as part of the Neutron project. And we keep that up to date um, so that, that OpenStack is an option in terms of being able to pr create a private cloud. Um, we've done integrations also with with VMware on the NSX side, so you can use the NSX tools to integrate through Mass. And as you're deploying a VXLAN service, make sure that you can also deploy the load balancing environment. And then we've done a similar thing with Cisco in their APEC environment, again, so that as you're deploying 
with the um, their policies, you're tying that into your load balancing policies at the same time. The systems is all, all multi-tenant, all to all multi-tenanted as well, so you get that level of control. Particularly important if you're a service provider with within customers. I'll just make a comment there. The uh, actually the, you you showed the um, the style books earlier on. Well, the heat templates in OpenStack are this, use the same exactly the same uh, same concept concepts and same language. Yeah. Okay. Uh, lastly, just to polish this off, um, we have CPX as uh, a, a container-based um, ADC capabilities that you can deploy. Um, in a Docker, and we've done integration with Kubernetes, so there's a lot of automation tied there into the container environment. Um, and CPX is actually available up in the in the uh, Docker marketplace, uh, so that you can download and, and give that uh, give that a try. And um, actually, I don't know whether we mentioned that or not, but it's not only NetScaler instances and um, services which are available or managed. With NetScaler Mass, right? We have, we have, uh, we can manage HA proxy as well, right? Yeah, we have, we have. Based on uh, some of the engagements with customers, we've put some uh, support into Mass for HA proxy, particularly the application dashboard uh, piece. Um, <clears throat> that's getting used because uh, some of the customers' uh, lines of business are using HA proxy. Uh, this gives them a way of again having a central management capability across the whole ADC environment. It also gives uh, a way of highlighting some of the advantages on the NetScaler side because it exposes additional capabilities um, with NetScaler that are not possible on the HA proxy side. So it, it gives a, a good comparative way of, of looking at um, some of the deltas. Um, I guess as a, as a specific example, some of the load balancing side, the, the NetScaler has additional methods in terms of things like least bandwidth, least packets, um, and also you know, custom load capabilities that you can get configured through the style books that you can't do on the HA proxy side. But it gives, um, you know, the, the central administration uh, good uh, visibility into that whole environment, whether it's, uh, you know, some of the open source software as well as using the, net, the NetScalers. Another thing that we wanted to highlight was just um, Mass is actually available as a service on Citrix Cloud as well as uh, an appliance that you can deploy in your own virtualized environment. So there's a couple of different deployment options there. And one of the things that we do with the service is do a lot of agile release updates into the service. And then once a quarter, we take those enhancements and push them into the appliance so that you've got a continuous roadmap on the, on the virtualized appliance form factor, as well as obviously um, more granular on the actual service coming from Citrix Cloud. Um, both environments have the full set of APIs and can manage the instances deployed both on-prem and off-prem. So finally, as a, as a kind of summary, um, what we're doing here with Mass is providing a unified management console with uh, both traditional instance lifecycle management capabilities as well as a lot of automation through the APIs. Automation that's designed to get a common configuration baseline across the, the, the environment and the fleet so that you get operational efficiency from that. You also get operational efficiency by reducing the number of different types of errors that appear. And then on top of that, we're starting to tie in end-to-end -end analytics. We're looking at uh, creating anomaly detection notifications against the performance baselines for things like uh, server load uh, anomalies and um, just actual latency anomalies uh, based on the base on based on the performance um, the application centric management I think hopefully we demonstrated the power of that in terms of both centrally giving um, much more visibility into which applications are impacted but then also presenting those services out to internal and external customers. And a lot of this is predicated on helping enable organizations to move from a traditional kind of on-prem environment into one where you typically have a mix of public cloud and private cloud and on-prem hardware-based deployments. 
Thank you. Uh, so that, that uh, concludes the, the formal presentation. Um, but now I think we should move into seeing if there's any questions that we can address. Yes, thank you, guys. That was really very informative. Um, and we do have several questions on the line. Uh, before we move into QA, I just want to remind the audience, if you have a question uh, for our speakers, you can submit it in the Ask Question area on your screen. Simply type your question into the text box and hit Submit. If we don't get a chance to uh, get to your question during the live session, we will be following up with all attendees and answering all questions uh, following. So our first question uh, looks like uh, this one is for George. Uh, George, you said that Mass is available as software or as a cloud service. When would you recommend one versus the other? So uh, this is really a question of, um, uh, I would say, of customer choice. So um, if you if you uh, use the on-premise version, that means that you download the software and you uh, you you find um, systems and install it yourself in your own data center. If you use the cloud uh, version, then Citrix takes care of the administration. We take care of the compute and the storage, um, and you purchase it as a as a, a subscription service. So it's really uh, a question, you know, and it, it's based really on whether the, what the customer's policies are and what their um, what their desire is in terms of how they want to deploy it. And so we're pretty neutral about that. Um, I would say that the, the the cloud service is a is a very easy way to try out Mass, you know, um, because basically you just sign up for the service and then you can um, configure your environment and then and then use it. So that's a, you know that's definitely a, an interesting way of trying it out. Whether you ultimately go with the on-premise version or, or the cloud service for your for your production deployment. Great. Um, and uh, I guess this one is for either of you. Um, so how does the trial work? Is there a difference between the on-prem versus the service? Yes, yeah, so the way it works is, let's do the on-premise uh, version first. So what you do is you actually go, you, uh, you, you go to the um, citrix.com and then you um, navigate to get started with Mass, and then you will uh, get an opportunity to download the software and, um, and then you install it and, and then you configure it and you use it. Um, and you, it's, it's unlimited in terms of you, the use of some of the functionality. And again, you can, you can consult exactly what that means. But basically, it means the, the, the management functionality. You can use that um, uh, effectively free of charge, and, and there's no restriction on the time uh, you know, over which you can use it. And then um, there's a charge for the, you know, the more um, uh, the, the analytics types of functionality. And you can use, there's a the kind of limited functionality that's available, again, without any restriction of time uh, on the, uh, the on-premise version. And if we talk about the cloud version, the way that works is it's a very straightforward 30-day trial, uh, and all of the functionality and all of the powerful features of the, of the, the product are available. But, you know, it's, it's uh, over a period of time, then it's 30 days uh, that you have to try out. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Ken, I have a question for you here on the line. Uh, how do we find out if there are style books available to configure or deploy for the apps that I use? Yeah, so the, today the style books are, uh, there's a set of style books embedded kind of into the product. So um, there's a set there that are kind of building blocks that a customer could use to make their own style books. There's a set that are pre-built for typical deployments of some of the kind of enterprise apps that I mentioned before. So the easiest way is um, is actually just to Google uh, the documentation on Mass, Citrix Mass. You'll, you'll see a list of the style books that are actually available there. As George just described, you can either sign up for a trial with the service or download the appliance version. And you can, once you've got that installed, you can go through that list. And we are looking in the future at uh, how we can make those more easily available, particularly to the development environment, so that they're easily consumed into the kind of development software stacks. Excellent. I think we have time for one more. Um, Ken, this one is also for you. Can you give more details on how Mass is priced? Yeah, so just to build out what George talked about a little bit, um, 
the the appliance version, as as he said, is kind of free for some of the core management and monitoring capabilities that I outlined earlier on. Um, and by monitoring there, it's kind of base syslog, SNMP, trap, event type information. Uh, we charge for the applications and the application, the, sorry, the analytics and the app, and the application centric dashboard side. So for the for the trial version, you can manage up to 30 v servers at no charge. Beyond the 30 v servers that you have configured in your environment, then there is pricing that is based in blocks of 100 v servers. Um, and then on the service side, similar similar approach to um, similar approach, except that because we have costs associated with actually operating the service ourselves. Um, there's there's the 30 day trial and then you do need to pay. We've tried to align the pricing between the two. So if you're using the full analytics, it's, it should be comparable. And it's and the service is purchased in blocks of 10. So there's a little bit more granular on the service. And we did that mainly because we see a, a lot of interest from medium and smaller customers. And there's actually licensing available which allows you to deploy on premise in the cloud and kind of move move back and forwards between the two, right? Yeah, there is, uh, there, hybrid is license. there is a hybrid license that helps you kind of if you're looking at migrating into the service to start with an appliance on prem and then move move into the cloud. Wonderful, wonderful. We have some other questions, and like I said, we'll get those answered offline and get them uh, over to everyone who asked. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone very much for attending. I'd like to thank our speakers for putting on such a great presentation. Uh, that does bring us to the end of today's session. A quick reminder, you can learn more about NetScaler Mass by visiting citrix.com slash NetScaler Mass, it's M-A-S, or check out and register for upcoming webinars and events by going to citrix.com slash events. Thank you again for joining us and have a wonderful afternoon.